Okay, so we just finished our run, trying out the Streak Fly, Zoomex Streak Fly on an easy run today as we taper for the New York City half, but more on that in a little, little bit. My stomach's been a little bit upset lately, uh, so I've just been having like some light food like toast and Pedialyte or just trying to stay hydrated. And uh, I just want to go over with you, uh, you know, my shoe rotation. It's something that someone brought up in the comments and I don't have much to do with the taper as far as running, so let's go ahead and dive into my shoe closet here and start to talk about what my rotation is currently. All right guys, so like I said, someone had asked about you know my current shoe rotation and during this taper when mileage is going down, what better time than to break everything out? Honestly, look at what I've got in front of me that I've been using and share it with all of you and talk a little bit about it briefly. So we're starting off with the one that I'm using most commonly right now. These are gonna be our daily trainers or what I'm using right now is my you know go-to for pretty much the most basic, either easy miles, recovery miles, uh, just getting out there going for a run. This is my go-to right now, the Zoom X Invincible. Had a little bit of an issue with my normal shoe size of 12 and a half in a Nike. Went up to a 13 and it's been great ever since. Super soft, uh, most recovery oriented, most slow pace oriented for me, uh, the Nike Zoom X Invisible, Invincible Fly Knit. Uh, my other go-to is the Asics Nova Blast 1. Now, I'm someone who likes to save money, who doesn't? Um, and as soon as I liked this shoe, you know, way back in like, I don't know if it was 2019, 2020, uh, I really liked this particular shoe. They started coming out with the second one. You know, reviews were so-so about it. It didn't get any worse, but it wasn't necessarily much better. So I started to pick up some pairs of this on sale. And this is still, again, the Nova Blast one. This is the last one that I have. I think it has about 200 miles on it so far. And, you know, I'm just glad that I had picked up extra pairs at the time for a good price because, again, this is one of my main go-tos, uh, you know, actually between these two. Uh, it just is getting older, getting more age in it, and I don't have another backup of the Nova Blast 1. So maybe I'll try the next iteration, whether the 2 or 3 or whatever they're up to by the time I finish with this one. Um, but yeah, Asics Nova Blast 1, got it on sale, good deal. One of my favorite uh, daily trainers out there. As we move this way, it kind of goes into if I'm doing something a little bit more up-tempo. This is the Brooks Aurora BL. It's a decoupled outsole, a uh, very unique shoe, nitrogen-infused foam here. Uh, you know, I talked about it in a previous video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail today. Full booty, gusseted tongue here. This foam makes you almost want to go a little bit quick, even though it's really just something I'm using as a daily trainer here and there. The last one I have is my Rincone 3. This shoe has about 120 miles on it. At my weight, you know, the outsole looks good, but you know, you start to feel some of the wear in this particular EVA foam. So I don't use it as much anymore, but it still is in my rotation if I want a lighter shoe for a daily trainer. And you know, I could probably get a good 75 more miles out of this. So these are my current daily trainers. Okay, so next I've got my up-tempo day shoes, you know, my speed work, whether it be a track session, threshold miles, you know, road repeats or intervals. These are kind of my go-to right now. Um, same thing as the Nova Blast. This is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 1. Picked up a whole bunch on sale. I bought these on sale once I knew that I really loved this shoe. And here we are with a pretty fresh pair, uh, even though, you know, we're way beyond the Saucony Endorphin 1 at this point I get to kind of use the benefits of those savings and getting them on sale and still get a really great shoe out of it. So Saucony Endorphin Speed 1, still one of my go-to's, probably my most used shoe for a regular speed day um, when I'm not, you know, trying something else out. This here, the new kid on the block, the Streak Fly, Zoom X Streak Fly, for me, this is not going to make its way into a racing shoe. I did my first impression run just the other day, or first impression of on this shoe just the other day. I don't think I see myself racing in it, but I will be using it as an up-tempo shoe. Um, stuff like track work, 400 repeats and things. This shoe is really light. It feels really good. Just not quite as good as the Next% Percent 2 and some of the other racing shoes that are out there. So up-tempo shoe for me, Zoom X Streak Fly, new kit on the block right now and something I'm currently testing pretty often. 
Then we've got the next percent one. This shoe, again, kind of gets into that realm of, for me, it's got about 125 miles on it. Actually, this is my Chicago and New York City shoe in 2019. Had a lot of other races in it. It's just a little bit worn out for me to, to say that I get the full benefit of it on a race day, especially for a full marathon. But I'll certainly still use this shoe for some speed sessions and things like that. And last but not least, I just can't help but bring this back out because I could totally do a speed day in the Asics Nova Blast. I love the way it feels. We already talked about it as a daily trainer, but I could definitely go faster in this shoe if I wanted to. Uh, maybe I'm traveling, something like that. I want to get a shoe that I can do a couple different things in. This would be a shoe that I could certainly do any kind of run, really. I mean, there's nothing that I wouldn't do in this shoe. I really like it that much, just in my opinion. <laughs> so these are my up-tempo shoes and kind of kind of this one also. Okay, and last for the road shoes, I have the shoes that I choose to race in at this time. I've got the Nike Next Percent 2, um, a go-to for many, many, many runners. Still probably my favorite race day shoe. I've only used the Alpha Fly in a 5K so far, but I'm gonna use it for the New York City half in just a couple days. So I'll have a better sense of how I like it in comparison to the Next Percent, but they do the same thing for me. I don't think there's really any benefit of one over the other that I can tell yet, but just for the feel of it, I kind of like the Next Percent 2 a little bit better, but like I said, we'll be kind of moving in this direction, uh, you know, this weekend for one, and then we'll see going forward. So Nike Next Percent at 2 and Nike Alpha Fly, uh, you know, two of my Nike racing shoes, and these are kind of my go-to at this time. Now over here, kind of goes back into that category of, you know, some savings, doing things I can to save some money, but still have a nice shoe rotation. This is the Saucony Endorphin Pro 1. Got it for about $99 on sale relatively recently. And this is the shoe that I'll use if I'm doing, you know, just races on the road that I'm doing for fun. Maybe it's not a peak race, but again, great bang for my buck. I can use this for just about any road race under about 10 miles and not put too many miles into my, you know, real super shoes over here. So Saucony Endorphin Pro 1. Okay, now last we've got, uh, we're just gonna go into the trail category separately. And currently I use the Hoka Speed Goat 4. This is my, you know, essentially daily trainer if I'm out on the trails. Shoes to just get the mileage in. Works really well from where I am out here in Beacon, uh, going up Mount Beacon, a whole bunch of the other trails and things around here. Uh, it's kind of a mix of like rock and then just like loose rocks and dirt. Um, so, you know, this, this works just fine going out in those conditions. It's a great all around shoe. I do love the Speed Goat 4 for just daily mileage. For my trail racing, uh, you know, I've got my trail half marathon in Mount Beacon coming up in a few weeks. Uh, this is gonna be my shoe for that day. This is the EVO Speed Goat. Um, probably one of the most popular shoes that is just impossible to buy. Uh, I got really lucky maybe Maybe six months ago, I was able to get a delivery of the EVO Speed Goat. I think I actually ordered it like two months before that, and it was like a two month waiting period. But nonetheless, this is probably the last EVO Speed Goat that I'll be able to get my hands on brand new. And uh, you know, this is my go-to again for fast days on the trail, or if I want to truly race or just have a, you know, a nice light shoe out on the trails for, uh, you know, longer distances, like, you know, half marathon, full marathon, or ultra marathon on the trail. So that's it. That's a little bit of everything that I'm actively using in my shoe rotation. I do have other shoes in the closet, um, but just not things that are in use. Maybe they're retired, things that I have just saved to kind of see the iterations of shoes over time. But this is everything that I'm actively using as I train currently. Uh, let's just bounce back again to today's run for those who really want to see it. Uh, it was a nice four mile run, relatively easy. Uh, four miles at an average of 936 per mile and 139 beats per minute on the heart rate. Down below in the video description is linked to my Strava if you want to see some more details, but that's the basics of what it is for today as we continue to taper into the New York City half this coming Sunday. So that's it everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of all the shoes that I have currently in my rotation and I hope to see you in the next video.